Hi friends, welcome to Mama's YouTube channel. Today's book is a brand new book that just got released by Slumberkins and I'll give you a little hint what it's about. Check out my wings. And do you see what's on my shirt? It's a bumblebee. Today's book is called How to Be Helpful, and it was written by Kelly Oriard with Callie Christensen. Deep in the woods, five friends sat to play, laughing, snacking, and gabbing away. Just then, little Ibex sat up with a start, feeling a pain inside of his heart. Something is wrong, said Ibex with fear. I know it inside me, and the feeling is clear. All of the creatures sat up to attend the message from Ibex, their sensitive friend. Yes, I feel it. I feel it. It's getting quite strong. The woods are unhappy, and something is wrong. Just then, Honeybee traveled near the young crew, sniffling and crying sad tears as she flew. What's wrong, little friend, Ibex said, full of care. Why the sad face and the tears will you share? Honeybee took a breath and she calmed herself down. My home is destroyed, she said with a frown. The thing about Ibex we should all learn to see, Ibex knows from the heart if things aren't as they should be. We can all be like Ibex when something is wrong. Check in with our hearts, it shouldn't take long. Oh no, Yeti cried without missing a beat. We must fix your home, and she jumped to her feet. As Yeti took off to find Honeybee's home, Honeybee sat there confused and alone. Where's Yeti going? She doesn't yet know that the problem is bigger and starting to grow. Before you get up and set out on your task, be mindful and slow down and be sure to ask. The friends all called out to their dear Yeti kin, slow down and come back, let us learn and check in. We love your fast pace and your big open heart, but be mindful and calm down. Begin at the start. Yeti came back and she slowed herself down, sitting and breathing and looking around. I'll learn to check in with my friend like I should because rushing ahead can cause more harm than good. The friends sat together to inquire some more, and Honeybee shared the challenge in store. I do want your help, but the problem is big. My hive fell to the ground. It snapped from a twig. My family is homeless and needing some aid. It's not just our branch where the problem's been made. The whole forest is sick and grows weaker by day. What is the problem? I wish I could say. Honey Bear listened, feeling grateful Honeybee shared then wondered aloud how to support those who feel scared. There are lots of big problems for us to address. What can we do that will help out the best? The friends sat together, all feeling confused. Honey Bear turned to Honey Bee, asking, what do you think we should do? Honey Bee replied because she'd given some thought Let's search all together for the source of the rot. Honey Bear had some great thoughts on this day to help out the bees in the very best way. It's important to ask how and where we should start. We can all work together, each doing our part. The friends all agreed, and Honey Bee too. They took off in search of the good they could do. The friends traveled far as trees withered away, and they ended their mission down by the bay. They stood at the edge, feeling shock and surprise. The gray and brown water brought tears to their eyes. The town had been dumping old berries in there, rotting and spoiling the water and air. The air was polluted and so were the trees. This must be the source of what's hurting the bees. When the earth has been hurt, we all feel hurt too. 
Their friends knew at once what they all had to do. They started right up with a well thought out plan, knowing they must fix both water and land. We must clean the forest, the water and kelp. We'll go into town and ask others for help. They requested permission to help their dear friends and told the town leaders the pollution must end. We must stop this dumping of berries, of course. This problem will end if it's stopped at the source. They all worked together to clean up the space, cleaning and running all over the place. Out to the water to pick berries up at the shore, back to the forest fixing twigs, branches, and more. Feeling tired, exhausted, they started to slow, but knowing the importance, they continued to go. With each scoop of berries and sweep of the floor, they pushed through the pain and began feeling sore. Sloth noticed his friends needed a break. They'd forgotten themselves while cleaning the lake. He knew the importance of finding some time to take care of yourself, to be at your prime. He called to his friends, it's time for a sit. Let's rest for a minute and eat for a bit. The group all sat down, including the bees, snacking and talking and leaning on trees. When working to help, remember self-care. We can solve problems better when we come up for air. Sloth checked in with himself and his body did know. Our own needs are important when we're on the go. After the break, the friends cleaned up some more. They felt proud of themselves as they sat on the shore. They'd all worked together to help out the bees who'd rebuilt their homes in much cleaner trees. The bees felt grateful for the help they received, thanking their friends for all they achieved. Otter began to reflect on the day, realizing the importance of helping in a respectful way. They stood alongside their friends, the bees, helping to make a plan to fix up the trees. They got permission to help and others joined too, all working together, a big caring crew. They stood with bees in their big time of need. They listened, worked hard, and completed the deed. They didn't ask to be heroes or get lots of praise. They helped heal the earth in the kindest of ways. Now the bees had a safe place to live. Their friends realized they had so much to give. Together we all live and breathe the same air and taking care of our earth shows that we all care. It feels good to be helpers, Otter said from the shade, but what feels even better are the friends that we've made. The bees buzzed around and the friends all agreed. They had learned about helping and caring indeed. The lesson was clear what they learned on this day. They said it out loud to remember the way. When I feel something is wrong, I can ask where to start. Helping others in need, together each doing our part. Now I have got a couple questions for you. Let's see if you remember what happened in the story and we can talk about it a little bit together. Have you ever been like Ibex and noticed something was wrong? If so, what did you do? Oh, thank you so much for sharing. Wow. What mistake did Yeti make when she was trying to be helpful? What did she learn to do instead? Do you remember? That's right. Yes, Yeti ran off and was instantly going to go help solve the problem before she even knew what the problem was. Sometimes you gotta slow down and take your time to find out what the problem is before you can do anything, right? Why was it important for Honey Bear to ask Honey Bee what she thought of the problem? 
That's right. It was important because sometimes we don't know what the problem is. We might think that we do, but it's important to find out what others think and get their ideas too. What helpful tip did Sloth offer to the group? Why was that important? Do you remember? That's right. They needed to take a break. They were all getting so tired. He told them it was time to take a break and that they needed to get rest so that they could keep going. You need to fill your own cup before you can help others sometimes. What did Otter feel was the best thing about helping? How does it make you feel to help others? That's right. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that with me. You are totally right. Otter said that it was the best thing was not just helping, but it was making friends while helping. And then I'm supposed to ask myself, are there any lessons from this story that are helpful for me to keep in mind when I'm helping others? Well, there was a lot of great examples there, but I really liked the one about Yeti and with slowing down and not just running out to go try to solve the problem. I liked how you just got to slow down and listen to what the person is telling you. And then you can take steps together to figure out how to solve the problem. I really appreciated that. What was your favorite part about the book? And what did you think was most helpful to you? Oh, that's wonderful. I'm so glad that that helped you too. Thank you for sharing with me. Book all done. That was such an awesome book and I hope that you enjoyed it and that it gave you a lot of uh, inspiration and a lot of ideas on ways that you can help others and how you can help the world too and all the different steps that you can take. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Hi, parents. If your little one loves my videos, then please be sure to click the big red subscribe button so you can be notified when I have a brand new video. Okay, see you soon. Bye-bye.